Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Well, hey there and welcome back. Today, I want to talk about why you shouldn't lose the musician side of who you are. And you're probably wondering, what in the world does she mean? Of course, I'm a musician. I'm a music teacher. I'm not losing the musician side of who I am. I teach kids music every day. I'm also being a piano accompanist, or maybe you are directing a choir outside of school. Maybe you're participating in your church music, but stick with me here, okay? I have a point. So let me start with this. I was reminiscing the other day about how long I used to be able to devote to playing the piano without any interruptions, okay? You probably have thought this as well, right, on your instrument, I always had dreams of being a traveling concert pianist, and you may have heard me mention, um, or maybe haven't, but I started my degree when I started college years and years ago as a piano performance major. I honestly I wanted to be a traveling concert pianist, and that was like my dream since I was six years old. It wasn't until the middle of my sophomore year I realized I kind of had a heart shift And I thought, you know what, I actually really, really have a deep desire to teach music to kids. And so I switched my degree. And then I was only three credits short of having a dual degree in piano performance and music ed. I just didn't finish that that side of that degree because I decided to just continue on and do student teaching instead of, you know, staying around just one more semester to finish that class that was during the day. Anyways... So I've always had a deep musical side to me, as you do as well. And I just remember how long, like I said, I used to be able to practice and how I could just sit at the piano anytime I wanted and play just for fun, just for me. But I mean, also I had to practice because of the senior recitals and I was in the practice rooms hours and hours at a time. Well, I want you to remember what instrument or instruments you learned growing up. You probably didn't just learn it so you could stop playing it one day, right? You just, this is stuff I try to be real with you on this podcast about things nobody really talks to you about. Hey, when you start teaching elementary music, you're going to probably not have very much time to practice your instrument just for fun, just for you. And all those hours you spent practicing, you're not going to have as much time to do that. You just don't realize these things. So you were probably in band, took private lessons, orchestra, choir, all the way from elementary school through college and beyond. And then you became a teacher. And you obviously became a teacher because you had a desire to become a teacher, right? And so um, I get it. You're so busy juggling life and work and you're teaching your students instruments in your classroom, whether it's recorder, ukulele, mallet instruments, rhythm instruments, and along with everything else in your life, you start kind of losing your musicianship in the process. So right after college, I would be in the practice rooms for hours and hours at a time and during college. Then I started my first teaching position in January. I quickly realized I barely had time to play the piano or clarinet anymore. I knew I still wanted to play and I had roommates that I, so right after college, I, you know, after being in the dorms, I lived in a house full of There was five of us that lived there. So I had four roommates. There was nowhere to put my piano, so I kept it at my parents' house. It just became a little more difficult to practice. I couldn't just go to the practice rooms anymore. And then anytime you tried to practice, I'm speaking from the piano side of things because that's what I know. Anytime I would practice in my classroom, kids would always come in or interrupt or say, play that for me or what are you doing? It just got really hard. So um, I quickly realized I barely had time, like I said, to play anymore. I knew I still wanted to play, but since I had roommates at home and gone were the days of being able to sneak away to the college practice rooms and shut the door behind me, I just had to get a little bit more creative about it. So I want to give you some suggestions and ways you can be a little creative about still fostering the musician side of you, of who you are. So you don't start feeling a little bit bitter and resentful. And I don't like using those words. But what I mean is you're going to miss that side of who you are. 
Yes, you're still using a musician side of you every day because you're teaching music. You may be an accompanist. You may still, like I said, teach choir. You may still play in an orchestra. But when is the last time you've gotten to just practice just for you with no one else around? So here's some ser- some quick creative strategies that will really help you out. And maybe you're already doing these things. And if you are super and awesome, and keep it up. So at school, okay, so I'm like I said, I'm speaking from the piano side of things. Um, stay a little bit longer after school. And instead, instead of using that all that time to plan or prep, when you know it's kind of quiet in the hall, most of the kids are gone, the teachers are in their classrooms planning in their classrooms, and you're going to sometimes have the after school care, you know, there, but maybe use that time, lock your classroom door, it's okay, school's over with, the school hours are done, it's not contract time, and practice for yourself just for a little bit. Open up that Beethoven Sonata you haven't played in forever and just start playing and just be like, you know what? I'm done teaching for the day. I want some creative time for me just to unwind, play for me, play some real music I haven't gotten to play in a while and just use 10 to 30 minutes after school if um, if you can to practice your instrument. And then maybe, like I said, you accompany a choir, um, maybe it's an honors choir, you, uh, the local Tulsa, I mean, I'm saying Tulsa Children's Chorus, because that's what I accompanied for when I lived in Tulsa. But maybe you're an accompanist or a choir director even for your local children's choir, or maybe not even just a children's choir, but a choir. So maybe show up a little early, even before the director. And this was, this is what I would do too. And you just find some time to just practice before anybody gets there just for fun. Okay, but on top of that, most of the music you're playing when you're accompanying this choir music is pretty legit, right? It's, it is intense. It's very, very parts that, you know, there's the choir parts and the piano score is usually pretty, pretty deep and challenging itself. So you're going to have to have time to practice the choir music itself as well if you're an accompanist. That was a, that's a great way to keep up your musicianship as well because you're playing while you're reading music and you're accompanying and those are those that's another great way to keep it up. Um on top of that, maybe you're playing for choir and soloist and ensembles and that'll keep up your musicianship because the solo and ensemble music you're practicing for while you're practicing, you're keeping up your musicianship because you're practicing that music as well, right? And then my favorite way, which is simple, but if you teach private lessons at a studio, and like I said, I'm using from the piano side of things. This goes, if your instrument is guitar, if it's a brass instrument, woodwind, um, if you're a singer, anything that is your instrument, find the time to practice that. I'm just using piano as an example because that's what I what I know best. Okay. So maybe you teach private lessons. And if you teach at a studio, or even if you teach from your home, or even if you teach from school, use the time between each student coming in. Maybe you allow some grace time instead of putting your students back to back to back, give like a 10 minute window. So and first of all, you're going to need that time to prepare for the next student, but also use that time to sometimes just practice. So you're Practice sessions aren't going to look like they didn't even in college because you're not going to have chunks of time to practice. You're going to, and if you do, great. But if it's a situation like, you know, where you're in a house with roommates, it's not going to happen unless you have a specific place to put an instrument and you can still close the door behind you. And if you can, wonderful. But for everyone else, you're going to just have to be more creative with your time. Okay, still fit in practice time for you. And it's not just practicing like you're not practicing like you did in college for a jury and for your um, different, you know, recitals and things, but you're practicing sometimes just for you to keep up your musicianship. We all know as musicians, there's sometimes you practice for fun. And then there's sometimes you practice because you're preparing for something. There's two different ways of practicing. Sometimes it's just like in a job. You show up sometimes and you do, you know, you have to go to meetings and you don't want to do it. And then sometimes you show up because you're you're teaching. That's the side you like. It goes for, there's, in life, there's always things you want to do and sometimes you don't want to do it, right? So with practicing, it's the same way. I'm not talking about practicing to prepare for something. I'm talking about keeping up your musicianship for you just playing 
and practicing to just keep up who you were as a musician long before you even became a teacher. Don't lose that side of you because it is very important you remember that side of you because you are musical. You are a musician and long before you became a teacher, like I said, you were a musician. So I don't want you to lose that side of you because it, it's it's a way for you to keep your um, music musicality up, but it's also a good way to just help you with stress. To be honest, if you just unwind and play for fun and not always just to prepare for something or to just practice because you have a reason to, it really does help you clear your mind and remind you, man, I am a musician before anything, before you know, before I became a teacher, this is who I am. And I wanted to become a music teacher teacher to inspire my students to be musicians. So of course, I need to keep up who, who I am as a musician. And next week, by the way, I'm going to talk about ways to bring your musicianship into your classroom. Okay, so stay tuned for that. But um, practicing, like I said, will look way different than it did when you were able to practice and you had all the time in the world to go to a practice room for three, four hours at a time. So if you're stressed out teaching some days, think about the last time as you played a piece of music just for you and no one else. When's the last time you just sat at your instrument and played or sang one of your favorite pieces of music? When's the last time? And if you're sitting here thinking, gosh, I really don't know, then it's probably been too long, right? So wipe the dust off (laughs) of your favorite book or piece of music and just start singing or playing just for fun. But don't feel discouraged if you miss being a musician or if you feel like you've lost a bit of who you are as a musician. It's way different going from being in ensembles all the time and being able to practice and being a soloist to now most of the musicianship you're using is to just teach your students, right? Whether it's one-on-one or in a classroom setting. And like I said, this is something no one really talks about, the feelings you're going to have and just how different life will look after college for you when you're teaching music in a classroom setting, you as a musician kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. And it's just a transition. It's not, you know, right or wrong. It's just hard. It's a hard transition kind of. Um, And so, of course, you're teaching elementary music because you want to and because you have a passion for it, but just don't lose your musicianship in the process, okay? So like I said, come back next week. So we're going to talk about how to bring your particular musicianship into your classroom. And I can't wait to see you, to be back next week and to continue this conversation. Have an amazing week teaching your students and I'll be back soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.